guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today we're going to be doing some examples on double angle formulae. Firstly, before I get started, I'd just like to encourage you guys, if you haven't already watched the previous video on double angle formulae, to please do that, as this is basically a consolidation of that, and the link for that is in the description below. And I'd also encourage you to work through these examples before you watch the video. So a link to the PDF of all the examples is also in the description below. And I'd encourage you guys to try it first and then watch me go through the solutions. So let's get started. Okay, so for our first example, we're told to prove that tan x equals one minus cos two x minus sine x all over sine two x minus cos x. So basically the question is asking us to prove that the left-hand side of the equation is equal to the right-hand side. And in these types of questions, it's important to note you can only work with one side of the equation at the time. So you can't work with both sides of the equation simultaneously. You have to specify which side you want to work with. So in this case, we'll be working with the right-hand side because it's the most complicated side and that's the side we'll be able to simplify. So we can try to simplify this side here and show that it's equal to tan x. It would be very hard to go backwards from tan x to this right hand side. There's not much you can do with tan x. So let's inspect what we're given, okay? From what we learned in the previous video, is that we see a cos double angle here in the numerator. And with that cos double angle, we see a sine single. So the equation I'm thinking of here is 1 minus 2 sine squared x, because that's going to help us to set up a trinomial. Um, and we also see that we have a positive one here in the numerator and we have a negative before our cos 2x so our 1 minus sine squared 2x will also allow us to cancel that one so we can see there's two uses for our 1 minus sine squared 1 minus 2 sine squared x so let's go and fill that in so we can fill in the numerator and replace cos 2x with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And always remember your brackets because the negative is going to get transferred in there because we're replacing this entire cos 2x with this entire 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And now let's take a look at our denominator. In the denominator, you can see that we have a sine double angle over here and a cos single. So one of the uses we spoke about with the sine double angle was that if you see a cos single with it, you'll apply the sine double angle formula and take out cos as a common factor. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll apply our sine double angle here in the denominator and that becomes 2 sine x cos x minus cos x, okay? And now let's further simplify this fraction. Our numerator will now become 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared x because remember our negative over here gets multiplied to this negative here minus sine x all over 2 sine x cos x minus cos x. Okay, now you can see in the numerator, this one here is going to cancel with this one here, right? And in the numerator, we have a sine and a sine. So using factorization, we can take out sine as a common factor. And something similar occurs in the denominator because we can see 
we have a cause and a cause. So in the numerator, we'll take out sine as a common factor, and the denominator will take out cause as a common factor. So let's go ahead and do just that. First, let's simplify just to see a little more clearly. Cancel out the ones. Okay. So you can see we have our signs at the top and our causes at the bottom. And I'm just going to write, bring it up here. We'll take out sine x as a common factor, and that will leave us with 2 sine x minus 1. And that would be all over. Let's take out cos as a common factor, cos x over 2 sine x minus 1. So now you can see something quite nice here in the fraction. We can see that both in the numerator and denominator, we have a 2 sine x minus 1. So these two can cancel, and then we ultimately left with um, sine x over cos x. Now, we learned from our relationship between sine, cos, and tan in our first. So from our previous videos, we discussed the relationship between sine, cos, and tan. And we know that the relationship between tan, sine, and cos is that tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. So we can apply that here and say that sine x over cos x is going to give us tan x. And that equals our left-hand side. So we've proven and solved this question. So you can see how easy it is to solve these questions if you know which double angle formula to use in which situation. I'm just going to show you guys in the same example what would have happened if you didn't choose the right um, cos double angle formula for cos x. Because we saw a cos double angle with a single sign, we decided to use the formula 1 minus 2 sine squared x. But what if you, by mistake, chose cos squared x minus sine squared x? Well, then, what would have happened? Well, let's um, do that here. Your right-hand side would have been equal to 1 minus cos squared x minus sine squared x minus sine x. And that would be all over sine. Well, we, there's only one sine double angle formula, so you'd use 2 sine x, cos x in the denominator, right? And then it would be 1 minus cos squared x plus sine squared x minus sine x. And then in your denominator, you'd still be able to factorize into cos x into 2 sine x minus 1. Now the problem is going to arise in the numerator because what can you actually do? We have four terms and none of them seem related that much. You could probably go and say 1 minus cos squared x is sine squared x from the Pythagorean theorem. That would be plus sine squared x minus sine x. See, this is going to get you your answer, but it's going to be much longer. So it's much better to recognize the rules that and the uses we discussed in the previous video and go from there. So that would give you 2 sine squared x minus sine x all over cos x into 2 sine x minus 1. 
and that is then sine x into 2 sine x minus 1. You can see we've arrived at the same step as we did in the previous video, but it took us a much greater number of steps to get there. And it was also much more difficult because you had to recognize that 1 minus cos squared x is sine squared x from the Pythagorean theorem, and that can be a bit difficult in an exam. So you would have had to have recognized that. And that's also going to cancel here. You left with sine x over cos x, and that would have given you tan x. So you can see we arrive at the same result. It's just a much longer journey to get there and much more difficult. So let's go on to our next example. In this example, we're given cos 4t minus cos 2t over sine 4t minus sine 2t equals 1 over tan t. So in this example, it's going to be best if we look at the left-hand side because it has our double angles, it's more complicated, and it will allow us to prove that it's equal to the right-hand side. So let's say our left-hand side is equal to... Now let's look at the numerator and look at our uses. We're given cos 4t here and cos 2t here. Now 4t is double 2t, so cos 4t will be our cos double angle, and cos 2t will take to be our sine single. So from our uses, we know that if you see a cos double with a cos single, you use the formula 2 cos squared x minus 1, so you can set up a trinomial, okay? Let's look in our denominator. We also have a 4t and a 2t, and 4 is double 2. So sine 4t will be our sine double angle, and sine 2t will be our sine single angle. So we can use the normal sine double angle formula. There's only one, which is 2 sine x cos x equals sine 2x. So we'll use that formula there. So let's go and put those in. So for our numerator, we said we're going to be using 2 cos squared 2t minus 1 minus cos 2t. And you can see over here, I've halved my angle. I've put a 2t over here because 2t is half of 4t because I applied the double angle formula. Let's go on to our denominator. So we said we're going to use the sine double angle formula there. We'll replace sine 4t with 2 sine 2t cos 2t. And also note again that I've halved the angle here. From 4t it's become 2t because 2t is half of 4t minus sine 2t. Okay, let's just get rid of our brackets and simplify just so we can see what we're working with here a bit more clearly. I'm just going to bring the cos 2t here to the middle so we can see the trinomial a bit more clearly. And in our denominator, that's just going to be 2 sine 2t cos 2t minus sine 2t. Okay, so now in the numerator, you can see that we have our x squared term, cos squared 2t, 2 cos squared 2t, and we have our x term, which is cos 2t, and our number here. So basically, it's 2x squared minus x minus 1, if you wanted to think about it in terms of x's. And if you wanted to factorize that in terms of x's, that would be, that would be then 2x minus 1 into x plus 1. So we can apply the same thing to the 2 cos squared 2t, the cos's. And in the denominator, 
we can see that we have sine 2t over here and sine 2t over here. So we can take sine 2t out as a common factor. So let's just go and do that now. We said the formula was going to be 2x minus 1. So we can say it's going to be 2 cos 2t minus 1 into cos 2t plus 1. And you can always go and use the FOIL method to re-multiply in and see if you get your original, just to check you factorized properly. And our denominator, we said we take sine 2t out as a common factor. That would give us 2 cos 2t minus 1. And now you can see in both the numerator and denominator, we have a 2 cos 2t minus 1. So we can cancel those two off. So let's just write out the simplified form here at the top. That's going to be cos 2t plus 1 over sine 2t. But you can see that's not even close to our objective yet which is 1 over tan t. But remember what we said earlier is that if you see a cos double angle with a plus 1, you can use the formula 2 cos squared x minus 1 to get rid of that positive 1. So we'll go ahead and do just that to try to get rid of that positive 1 over there. So that's going to become... 2 cos squared t minus 1 plus 1 all over sine 2t. And that's going to give us 2 cos squared t over sine 2t, right? And you can see in the denominator, we still have our sine double angle, that's sine 2t. So we can also get rid of that and make it into 2 sine t cos t using the sine double angle formula. So I'm just going to erase the rest of the stuff so we can come and write here back on so now let's use the sine double angle formula and that would then become 2 cos squared t all over 2 sine t cos t. And now you can see in both the numerator and denominator we have a cos t. So we can cancel that off but remember we still left with one cos in the numerator because it's a square so we've only cancelled one of them off and we can also cancel our twos over here and that's finally going to leave us with cos t over sine t. Now from our relationship between tan sine and cos we know that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta but in this case it's swapped around because we can see here we have sine at the bottom and cos at the top so it's the inverse so if we said that we could write tan over 1 here because tan over 1 is the same as tan if we swap the numerator and denominator we can swap the numerator and denominator on this side too so we can say that cos t over sine t would be the same as 1 over tan t. Or if you wanted to, alternatively, you could have said that cos t over sine t was equal to cot t, which is the same as 1 over tan t over here. Um, you could have done it either way, but it's still going to give you the same answer. So for our next example, 
we're given sine 2x minus cos 2x over sine x minus cos 2x. And we asked to prove that that's equal to cos x over sine x plus 1. So I think the best side for us to use is going to be the left-hand side because it's more complicated, has more terms, and it also has our double angles in it. So let's just take a look at what we're going to be dealing with. In the numerator, we have the sine double, sine 2x, with a cos single. So from our uses of the sine double angle formula, we said if you're given a sine double with a cos single, you're still going to use 2 sine x, cos x. That's the only sine double angle formula. And from that, it will allow us to take out cos as a common factor. Now, in the denominator, we have a cos double and a sine single. So out of our three cos double angle formulae, which one are we going to choose? Well, we learned that if you saw a cos double with a sine single, you'd use the formula 1 minus 2 sine squared x, which would allow you to cancel, to set up a trinomial um, with the sine x. So let's go ahead and do that. So our left-hand side would be equal to um, 2 sine x cos x, right? You've replaced that minus cos x all over sine x. And we said we'd replace cos 2x with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So we could set up our trinomial. So let's just rearrange this. That would give us 2 sine x cos x minus cos x all over minus 2 sine squared x. Actually, that's positive because we need to remember to multiply in the negative there. Plus sine x minus 1. And you can see I've just rewritten rearrange the denominator just so we can see our, tri our quadratic or trinomial right there. So in the numerator, you can see that on either side, we have a cos x, and we can take that out as a common factor by factorizing. And in the denominator, we have an x squared term, we have an x term and a number. So that's 2x squared plus x minus 1, where x is equal to sine x. So if we wanted to factorize that, we could say that that's going to be 2x minus 1 into x plus 1. That's our factorized form in terms of x. And we could do exactly the same thing with sine. Okay, so let's just write that out. In our numerator, we'll take out cos as a common factor. So that would be cos x into 2 sine x minus 1. And in our denominator, we'd factorize our, to get our trinomial. So that would be 2 sine x minus 1 into sine x plus 1. Right, And now you can see that in both the numerator and the denominator, we have the same term, 2 sine x minus 1. So we can cancel that out. And then we are left with cos x over sine x plus 1. So we have cos x over sine x plus 1 which is our right-hand side, so it's equal to our right-hand side. So we've just answered the question. So let's go on to our next question. What we are given is 1 over cos 2x plus tan 2x equals sine x plus cos x over cos x minus sine x. 
So the first thing we're going to do in a case like this is take our tan and make that into sine over cos because in, we never work with tan because we don't know the tan double angle formula. So we can go ahead and rewrite the left hand side because it's the more complicated side as being 1 over cos 2x plus sine 2x over cos 2x. So you can see you can replace tan no matter the angle, be it x, 2x, 3x, as long as you have the same si angle for sine in the numerator as you have in the denominator. Here it's 2x and 2x. So let's go and add these. Our denominator is the same. So we can add the numerators. That would be 1 plus sine 2x over cos 2x. Now we need to decide which double angle formula are we going to use. Well, in the numerator, we can see that we have a sine double angle and a number. Here it's 1. And our first use for the sine double angle formula was that if you see a sine double angle with a number, apply the double angle formula and also use the Pythagorean identity to put in sine squared plus cos squared so you can factorize um, that equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace 1 with sine squared x plus cos squared x. That's from the Pythagorean identity because we know that's equal to 1. So we haven't done an example where we had to do this yet. This is the first example we're doing that you have to replace your 1 with sine squared x plus cos squared x. And in the denominator now, this is a bit, a bit more of a complicated example because we don't exactly know which cos double angle formula to use because we have no 1s there to see if we need to cancel a 1. We have no sine singles or cos singles. So in this case, we have to do something a bit different. We have to look here on our right hand side. On our right hand side, we can see we're given cos x minus sine x. And we said that if you see a factor of, of cos squared x minus sine squared x anywhere in the numerator or denominator, then we use this formula over here for our cos double angle. It wasn't so obvious here because it wasn't on the left-hand side and it wasn't in the equation we were working with, but we had to look on the right-hand side for a hint or suggestion as to what formula to use. So let's go and replace our 1 with the Pythagorean identity. That's going to become sine squared x plus cos squared x plus... 2 sine x cos x because we used our sine double angle formula there. And in the denominator, we said we were going to use the formula cos squared x minus sine squared x because we saw a factor of that on the right hand side. So let's just rewrite our numerator with our 2 sine x cos x in the middle. And for our denominator, we're immediately going to factorize it. We'll say using a difference of two squares, that's going to be cos x minus sine x into cos x plus sine x, right? Now in the numerator, you can see that we have an x squared term a y squared term, it's y squared because it's different, we, because that's cos and this is sine over here. And in the middle, we have a 2xy. So if we wanted to factorize that, we could say that's going to be x plus y all squared. So we can factorize that equation like that. So we're going to say it's going to be sine x plus cos x all squared. 
So you have to recognize that you had an x over here, a y over there, and an x, y there. But this was one of the uses we went through in the previous video where we said that if you saw a sign double here with a number, this is what you'd be doing. So now we can see something interesting in the denominator because in the denominator we also have the term sin x plus cos x. We have cos x minus sin x over here, but next to that we have cos x plus sin x. And it doesn't matter that I have my cos in front here because 1 plus 3 or 3 plus 1 is the same thing. It doesn't matter which way around it is. Um, so we can just cancel one of our numerator and one from the denominator. And I say 1 because we're going to take away that square there because we actually have two of these. So we can just cancel that out there. And then we are left with sine x plus cos x over cos x minus sin x, which is our right-hand side and the answer to the question. So let's go on to our final question. In our final question, we asked to prove cos y plus cos so let's go on to our final question. So in the numerator, we have the cos double, cos 2y over here, and we have a cos single to the left of it, and a positive 1. So which is the appropriate cos double angle formula for us to use? Well, firstly, we said that if you saw a cos double angle with a cos single angle, you should use the formula. 2 cos squared x minus 1 to set up a trinomial. And you can also use this formula to get rid of the positive 1 as it has a negative 1. And in the denominator, we see we have a sine double angle and a sine single angle. So you can use the formula 2 sine x cos x and take sine out as a common factor. So our left-hand side is going to be equal to cos y, and we said we're going to replace cos 2y with 2 cos squared minus 1. So it'll be 2 cos squared y minus 1 plus 1. And in our denominator, we can use our sine double angle formula. That's going to be sine y plus 2 sine y cos y. Okay, now let's cancel in our numerator. We have this minus 1 here, which is going to cancel with this plus 1. And in our denominator, we can take out a common factor. Let's first just write this out as cos y plus 2 cos squared y all over sine y plus 2 sine y cos y. Now in your numerator, you can see that we have two cos terms. We have cos y and cos squared y there. So we can take out cos as a common factor. And in the denominator, we have sine here and sine here. So we can also take that out as a common factor and see where that takes us. So then we left with, so we can see where that takes us. So that's going to be cos y into 1 plus 2 cos y all over sine y into 1 plus 2 cos y. And now you can see in both our numerator and our denominator, we have a 1 plus 2 cos y term. So we can just cancel those two out. And then we are left with cos y over 
sine y. And as we saw in a previous example, if you have cos y over sine y, that can be rewritten as 1 over 10 because we said that from our relationship between tan sine and cos, um, that tan x over 1 is equal to sine x over cos x. So in this case, if we swap the numerators and denominators on this side, because here you can see we have cos over sine, then we also have to do that on the left-hand side and swap those around. So this will ultimately be equal to 1 over tan y, which is our right-hand side. And you could have also said that um, cos y over sine y is the same as cot y, and that 1 over tan y is also cot y, and you could have approached your solution like that, but this is just fine, it's much simpler, and you still get the same answer. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed these examples and you were able to see and consolidate our work on the uses of the sine and cos double angle formulae and you saw how we apply them and in what situations we do and I hope you remember this for the exams. Thanks guys and bye.